to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. It's Power Talk Friday. I have a special episode for you today. Amber De La Garza is back on the show. Amber is the productivity specialist. She is also one of the co-authors of my third book, which is coming out this fall, November 2020, A Well-Designed Business, The Power Talk Friday Experts, Volume 2. Amber is a coach, trainer, speaker, writer, and she has her own podcast, Productivity Straight Talk. She helps business owners improve their their time management, elevate their productivity, which in turn lets them maximize maximize profits, reduce stress, and free up time for what matters most. She was originally on the show back in episode 385, and she talked about effective time blocking and implementing systems and routines into your business in order to free your time so that you can focus on what matters most. This hit me between the eyes, I have to say. So much so that I've actually been working with Amber on in the last seven, eight months on my own productivity. Okay. So working with Amber has really transformed the way that I look at my time management and my priorities. She has helped me target and overcome beliefs and bring back a bit of balance to a life that I haven't seen since before I started this podcast. Okay. So this episode is a little different than most episodes because today Amber and I are actually going to be talking about the work that she and I have accomplished together. I would say that mostly she has accomplished pounding into my brain. Okay. (laughs) Uh, We are going to openly talk about the internal stories and beliefs that I had about my business and how she helped me look at them clearly and overcome them. And we're going to talk about how we adapted strategies and work through obstacles together. You know, my thick skull being one of them. Okay. But with the result of being able to reclaim some of my time, we're going to pull back the curtain on this process and the lessons that I learned along the way. I hope that you find some benefit in it because working with a productivity specialist was truly a life-changing experience for me. All right. And I also want to say my sponsor, My Doma Studio, is the productivity specialist you need for your design business, right? Imagine a single place for client proposals, client and vendor communications, time tracking, QuickBooks integration, the entire curated Kravit product collection right there in your My Doma Studio. Everything you need to be productive, efficient, and profitable in one single place. That is My Doma Studio. I would love for you to see what it can do to help help make your business more efficient. Go to mydomastudio.com forward slash a well-designed business. For your free trial, go to mydomastudio.com forward slash a well-designed business. All right. Are you ready to hear how Amber helped me improve my efficiency and regain some of that balance in my life? All right. Hang on. It's a heck of a ride. Hi, Amber. Thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Oh, I'm so excited for another chat with you today for your audience. I am too. First of all, I just want to remind everybody that not only have you been on the show before and that I've been on your show, which both were amazing experiences for me, um, that you are one of the co-authors in the next book. The, the It's called A Well-Designed Business, The Power Talk Friday Experts, Volume 2, that's coming out this November 2020. So I'm so excited to have you in this book with the rest of us, Amber. Oh, it is my honor. It's been such a great um, opportunity to do this project with you. Yes. So here's another project that you've been doing with me. (laughs) (laughs) 
you have, I mean, and I would say we got to call it a project because everyone, Amber, as you know, is a productivity expert. And if you know me, there's a saying called Luann's World. And this is Luann's World where... You know, at Window Works, Amber, I don't even know if I've told you this, but at Window Works, I found out recently, after many, many years of running this business, that they call me the hurricane. That, oh, okay, because we have cameras all over our parking lot and our doors. And so when you look up into the camera, you can see who's coming. And I recently learned that what happens when I'm approaching, they say, oh, the hurricane's here. <laughs> <laughs> That is hilarious. And to find out they had been saying that for years before you knew, right? Yes, yes. Like I had no idea. (laughs) And so the thing is, you've had quite a project on your hands these last seven or eight months because you have been coaching me in productivity because I am... Look, we, I, I, I think we would agree that I'm a person that gets a heck of a lot done in a day, but when I think about your strategy of working in your most productive, your high return, your high yield buckets, um, my friend Madeline McRae talks about, are you doing a $10 an hour job, a $100 an hour job, or a $1,000 an hour job, or a $10,000 an hour job, that I have, as I've built this podcast, um held to some beliefs that I thought I, I, why don't you tell them how crazy I've been the last eight months? How about that? (laughs) (laughs) Luann, first of all, I will let you use the word project. I would not say that. I would say (laughs) that you are an ideal client. Um, I have yet to have a client come to me that doesn't say something like, I bet I'm like the worst you've seen. I mean, have you ever, have you ever worked with anyone like me, like some version of that? And the answer is yes. And not to normalize it, but this is my unique specialized skill. Like this is exactly who I serve. Those people who are, um, successful and they want to be more successful. And it's kind of like, they want to do it more on purpose. They want to be more productive. They want to be more effective with their time. But with that comes a lot of chaos sometimes when we're running businesses such as your level. And so when you came to me, you said, I bet I'm going to be your most difficult client, <laughs> right? And I would not say that, but I would say that you, it was a process to unravel some really, really strong beliefs that you had about your business and about yourself that were bottlenecking you from really being in your zone of genius more often and living a life that that allowed you a more freedom because you are such a hard worker. Like you will do anything to hit your deadlines, to serve your audience, to do all the things that you're passionate about. But when we were working together, it was like, how can you do all of that and still have downtime and still have time to, you know, go running and exercise because I really believe that it can be an ant. And so that was really what our goal was, is to create more and in your business and life. Yes, I remember your saying in, in the beginning in your intake process and those first couple of sessions, and uh, we were doing a little autopsy of my life pre-podcast and post-podcast, and the dramatic change in my personal life and my personal freedom was was that. It was just dramatic. It, I used to be a person that, without exception— exercised six days a week. It was non-negotiable. It was non-debatable. It would be the type of thing where I don't care if I had to work, if I had worked all day Saturday or spent all day Saturday doing something for my children, with my husband, with our friends, whatever it was, and I would get back at 6 o'clock at night and we might have 7.30 dinner plans, I, I would hop on my treadmill for two and a half quick th- you know, miles, get a shower and be ready. It was non-negotiable all the way to getting up early and having an hour and a half to go to a yoga class. And now every moment that was that, that, that quick 35 minutes or that quick hour was, oh, I have to edit a show. Oh, I have to do the show notes. Oh, I have to write an intro, outro. Oh, I have to call a sponsor. Oh, I have to do this. It, it, it just sucked it all up. And my problem was that... It went on for four years because I loved it, 
because mm-hmm. I enjoyed it, because I could see that something was happening here and I was creating relationships and I was getting the juice. I was getting the emails every single week. You, you know, listening to your guests has changed my business. And so that was the... <clears throat> That little, like almost like this snaky, twisty, <laughs> you know, naughty ball that on one hand, I objectively had all, not all, much of my personal downtime and recreational and fun activities pulled out of my life, but they were replaced with something that was also extremely gratifying, except that I did not like that I was getting, you know, chubby and soft. I did not like that part. (laughs) Right. So the the session that you're talking about is that when I first work with a client, uh, we do an onboarding, you call it, you called it an autopsy. That's that could be that could be true, too. But essentially, what I'm doing is getting a deep dive and asking a lot of questions to finding out really why you would want to make any changes in your business with regards to how you're investing your time and energy and attention. And what you're explaining is that I was diving deep into not just solving for time management and productivity concerns to get more out of your business, but really how can we also reclaim the balance that you desire of exercising, having, you know, downtime with your husband more often and still growing the business. And it was really important to me to hear that it was a crucial aspect of your life that you really missed and you've now since normalized that that was put to the side uh, in pursuit of serving your business and your audience and those people. And so I was challenging you right off the right out of the gate in fact of like no, what boundary can we hold like no matter what, that would show that you're making progress in creating that balance again, whatever that means to you. You know what I just heard in there? And I remember having the aha moment when you said it to me, that by the time I came to work with you, I had normalized a seven day a week, anywhere from, you know, weekdays, 10 to 14 hours and weekends, eight to 10 hours. I had normalized that as my life that working was would 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 be within those parameters and I remember when you said I was like oh I'm not just doing it because I needed to do it today this has been going on for four solid years this is now my normal right like that was that was that was that was a mind blower to me because I was just like oh So if this is your normal, this isn't your normal for a week. This is your normal for four years. Is this what you're going to do for the next 24 years? Like you, you're nuts, lady. You'll collapse. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. And asking yourself, like, is that sustainable long term? Um, And if you took a step back from your business and you could really, really dream for what you wanted it to be, can it be um, reaching your goals and having Sunday off? And, you know, maybe just working a couple hours on Saturday. I think it's important to say um, to the listeners is that we didn't go in and say, okay, you're down to a 40 hour week. Like it does not happen that way. It (laughs) cannot happen that way. We're not trying to cripple the business. What we're doing is setting a plan for what we are eventually going to get to. And to do that now, insert strategy after strategy after strategy and action after action to make it possible that you can wean back your hours, throw in more exercise and downtime and still grow the business. So once we determined that that wasn't a normal that you wanted to continue with for the next 24 years or even five years, we needed to create a plan of how do we create those, that space and also make sure your business is served and your and your clients and your listeners are all served at the highest level. Mm-hmm. So it's again that and factor. Right. Oftentimes we look at our businesses and our lives of either or. Like I I had to give up my Saturday and Sunday to reach this level or to serve or to hit this deadline and I was challenging your thinking right up front to say what if it's an and what would that look like? Right. And and the thing about it was is to your point the process was so much more than just simply saying, Luann, get it done Monday through Friday, 
nine to five like the rest of the world and stop. Like it, because if if you had ever approached me like that, I would have been. I, I would have. Okay, really sorry. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? That's just not possible, yeah. right? And so, so, but it would. It was a continual every single week meeting and really i really feel like for me we hadn't talked about it from this this exact point but i really feel like for me it was having you constantly challenge me on why i would say that this was the way it would have to be done and mm-hmm. the 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 conversation of is if you were going to do it that way how else would it be done and so it was interesting. And I, I did share on a podcast earlier, a few months back, how we did work like, you know, you know how much I hate email. I cannot stand email. I, I hate it. Can I tell you it again? I hate it. All right. I really do hate it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it just, I, I, not only do I hate it because there are so many and I hate it because I will be writing a piece or creating um, information for the show or, and I need to go look something up that I know is an email and I'm on a roll and I go to that email and the next thing I know it's 40 minutes later because, oh, there came an email from a sponsor or look at that email from a guest. That's so sweet. Like I can't just not answer that email. Right. And so I would get down this rabbit hole. And then as we worked, it was, you would say to me, you can't, this is not the time for this. If you put the time aside for writing, then you've got to write. And then it was, then it was like, then I got, it was the other way. Because then I would be like, hey, I'm not, I can't do this now. But then I would wake up, you know, and be looking for some email three weeks later and find that heartfelt email from a listener from three weeks before that in the moment, I was like, I can't answer this now. Amber said, keep to writing. But then I would forget about it. I would be like, I get like, ah! <laughs> right. But, but then, so just to pull back the curtain on coaching. So you executed on a strategy and then you tried the strategy and then there was a glitch in the strategy, meaning no strategy comes out of the gate. Perfect. <laughs> so then we, you gave me the feedback of, okay, well, no, now I'm missing emails cause I'm not staying on them regularly. Now we problem solve for that and tweak the strategy. And eventually you came to batching out specific types of emails for specific times so that you're utilizing and leveraging batching and the same energy type. But I think it's really important to hear that oftentimes we employ these strategies with time management and productivity and think, oh, if they didn't work, just dump it. Right. Right. You could have just dumped that strategy and gone back to your old way, which was just checking in real time because that reached the goal of not missing emails for three weeks, but that wasn't in alignment going back to the old way with how do we reclaim more, you know, blocks of focused time for you to do your deep work. And that is the truth of it. See, that is the magic of having the ability or the gift of working with someone who knows their stuff and is in their superpower. Cause you're exactly right. If it had been a simple strategy that I heard on a podcast of, Hey, if you set time aside for writing, don't get involved in emails. And that happened. And like you said, three weeks later, I'm like, Oh my goodness. I missed two sponsor emails, three wonderful guest emails, and you know, one speaking engagement proposition that I, I I would have abandoned it. If I was on my own devices, I would have said, that's it. Anytime I see an email, I got to figure it out. But because I brought it back to you and complained about it, literally is what I did. I'm like, this isn't (laughs) going to work because this happened. (laughs) Right? Then you said, okay, batch them. And I'm just going to fast forward because then we did batch. I said to Lisa, you know, put the things that are important that I have to do in a single, you know, place and put it in my calendar to deal with it. But you see, what was interesting is to fast forward through that, that didn't work either. It did work a little bit, but it didn't work really well. You know why? Because then I came to it and here I would, she would, she would put in my calendar, say 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. handle emails. And now we have 10 days of emails that have been gathering. And here's what would happen. I would open an email. One would be, hey, I'm interested in being on your show and I have a great coastal vibe design you know, technique. And I'm just like, 
Right, because I don't talk about coastal vibe. I don't talk about any vibe. This is a bad pitch, right? I would get <laughs> aggravated. I'd be like, rah, like this. Then the next email was, Luann, we love your show, and we think we want to sponsor you. What does that look like? Then the next email. And, the, and what would happen is, for me personally, in that moment, I couldn't find a groove again because it was the constant changing gears. Oh, this one, I've got to position myself and pitch myself back to the sponsor. The next email is I have to gently and kindly, with respect, tell this person, I don't care what your design style is. And if you want to teach me something about business, I'd be happy to talk to you. And then the third one was, you know, you know, oh, you know, yes, let's take this speaking engagement to the next level. And I couldn't change gears. And, and right. so what would happen is 8 to 11 – by 8 30 be like later i'm out fried i'm, I'm not doing it yeah and so then yeah. we took it to the next level and it was like okay eight to nine is sponsor pitches nine to ten is wonderful emails from from listeners ten to eleven is what we call dumb ass pr pitches <laughs> Right. And so now you're able to utilize your flow and your assistant's able to sort and filter for you. So you don't need to think about it. So you're getting in and out a lot quicker. That's right. She does the pre-sorting and puts them in these little things. And I just have to, and she even takes it so far as to put the link in my calendar. So I just click on it and it opens and there they are. So it really was. Now this is weeks, this process, because to your point, when you're working with someone like yourself that has many, many options, sees many, many different ways to be productive, it is that value of we try one way, okay, it didn't work for you, but let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. What worked, what didn't work, okay, move into this. And I have to say that that has been my number one experience in these last eight months of being coached by you is that no matter how often I felt like, well, that didn't work. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, I'm like, and then you, you have your day before questionnaire and you're like, how's your productivity? I'm like, so, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and I would think, you know, she can't fix me. I'm broken. And then like all of a sudden another aha moment. Right. And, yeah. and it's always that evolution. And so, but then there was a moment, Amber, that you realize that the bigger challenge of my situation was not even that day-to-day, you know, in the weeds. It was the vision and the strategy for building the podcast because it is so, it is like, I remember when we built Window Works, it was a 24-hour thing and it was a a seven-day-a-week thing and I worked my fanny off. And so I came from that mindset of this is startup. You're going to do everything and anything that you have to do to get this baby out the gate and running on its own. And there'll be a time just like window works where you will have people in place that handle critical functions for you, but you're not there yet, sweetie. You're not there yet. And you kept saying to me, well, when do you get there? I'm like, I don't know, but I'm not there yet. (laughs) Right? Right. Exactly. I want to just back up really quick. Something you said is like, you know, I'm about your productivity and check-in and broken is like, I literally, this is my love. Like, (laughs) this is literally what I think I was put on this earth to do is help business owners not feel broken. Like this is a skill set that can be learned and then partnering with the strategy with someone that thinks differently than you. So if we're putting any given situation in the middle of you and I, we are two smart ladies, right? Right. And so you're coming to the table with your perspective and what needs to happen. And then I come in and just ask different questions to look at the same situation from a different angle. And that's what we were doing with everything that you were doing on a recurring basis in your business that was taking a lot of time. And the first place we started was obviously the podcast because as if you weren't doing enough episodes during this whole time when we're talking about how to cut back time, you add another episode a week. (laughs) And so I said, yes, like, so you're coming to the table saying strategically and serving my audience and all of that was all yeses. And so now we had to say, how do we still create more efficiency with Luann's time and serve even at a higher level, which is what you've done in the last few months by adding an additional episode 
to each week. Right. And that was the thing where I'm saying is when we started to get to that higher level, what I mean yep. is that you started just saying to me, where are you spending your mo- your highest value activities, right? What are your highest value activities? And right. also, what where are you spending your time? And we started to track my time, just like a designer tracks their time so that they can you know, come up with a great flat fee that they know that this is what it takes them to do. And what happened was, is I, I had what I thought was my highest value activities was also my highest time spent act. Like I, not all of them, but in the highest value was also the things that were taking the longest time. And so that was fine. I, that, that made sense to me. But then you challenged me on in the highest value activities that take the most time. Did I have to be the one to do it? And that's when I was like, what? Of course I do. (laughs) (laughs) How could anybody else do that? (laughs) Like, no way I have to do that. And, and the number one thing that we discussed was writing the intro outro for the podcast, right? We had right. long discussions about this and I'll share the story that I had said to you, which was my fortification for, I have got to be the one to do this. And I don't care if it takes me 18 hours a week, I've got to be the one to do this. And the, I, the thing was, is that there was a point in about, I would say eight, nine, 10 months into the podcast and it was rolling. And I did start out with three episodes. And after, um, I think a year and a half or two, I went back down to two episodes. And now of course I'm back to three but there was a point because then I had no support I didn't have Nicole Heimer I did not have Christy Roach I did not have Lisa you know Godet I did not have a team it was Luann and Luann and Luann and I got to this point where I recognized oh my goodness the the time that I spend on the intro outro it's it's ours. I really I listen to the show. I, I, I first of all I record the show. I take two pages of notes. Then I listen to the show again and I take another page of notes. Then I sit down and I write and I think and I'm like, what is the big lesson and how do I want to like relate that to other episodes and how do I want to relate that to my own life and how do I want to relate that to something I heard you know by a by a bird that walked by me yesterday right and then trying to write these intro outros and I said this is where you're spending your time. There are nine big, billion podcasts out there and they all say the intro outro all within the show that's it you're you're switching you're just going to say hi this is my guest you want to know the stuff about her go to the website I don't know what to tell you right and right. I don't know what we're going to talk about but it's going to be great <laughs> and then when it's done just say thanks so much and goodbye and and Amber I said to you you know how the universe talks to you the universe sends you messages literally three times in the same week that I had decided I was abandoning the intro outro three different ways. A listener made it known to me, three different listeners made it known to me that the intro outro was one of the most important aspects of the podcast. One was on an iTunes review. One was in an email that came in and one was at a live event. And each of them said, the same thing in a different way with this, the, with the, the, that point that it was so important to them and why it was important. And each had different reasons. And I just, I remember I left that live event. I got on the plane and I said, okay, universe, I'm not that dumb. Two or one probably would have done the trick, but all three I'm listening. And ever since then, it has been my belief that even though it takes me two to four hours every show to do the intro outro because I am so emotionally attached to it that I could not give that to anybody. And you said, and when do you do that mostly? I said, Saturdays and Sundays. And you said, there you go, lady. Right? Right. This was, I love that you shared that deep story of like how the belief evolved and you were affirmed in that belief. So we always look for positive proof on the belief we already hold. So you knew that this was your secret sauce. Like, Imagine, like, for those of you that are listening, I'm a coach coming into her business, which is her baby. Like, she's raised it. Not only has she raised her business, but this is her secret special sauce is doing intros and outros to the podcast. And I'm coming in saying, if you want to hold this, you want to exercise, you want more time with your husband, you want downtime, and you want to take your business to the next level, we're not moving forward until we evaluate your speak, your special secret sauce. And I'm not saying make it go away. I'm saying, how do we get there in a different way? 
And, and that was the conversations over several sessions of saying, I'm not saying to reduce the um, value or that the intro and outro should look any different. I'm just saying, how can we reclaim your weekends? How can we reclaim two to four hours times three episodes a week? That is massive amount of time. Now, this is Luann's highest value activity. And you guys will hear all about this in the book where I break down how to find your highest value activity. So make sure you definitely, you know, go grab the book when it comes out in November. But where, this is where business owners really get tripped up is that they blanket the whole activity and all the pieces under their bucket. So this bucket for Luann is marketing and visibility. So she's working in her highest value so she can rationalize and justify while all these activities is her showing up her best in her business. Why that's true, the bigger your business gets and the more demand on your time, you've got to be so ruthless with the pieces you keep in the marketing visibility bucket and then look at how can you still invest in that bucket in your business but outsource, delegate, and ask for help. And so that's where we're at here with Luann is me continually challenging her. Now, behind the scenes, I know that there's no one else that has Luann's voice, her spin, how she knows you, the listener. Like that is her special sauce. There's no one else that can ever take that place. But can the intro and outros get written still? So that she gets two to four hours. And so that's the question we held between the two of us for quite some time, right, Luann? For a long, long time. Because <laughs> I kept saying, no, no, <laughs> no. Yeah. I just could not see it. And the thing is, I don't know if you remember, but I made a half, in, in the moment, it was not a half-hearted attempt. I, there was nothing, I was, I was, I shouldn't say a half-hearted attempt, because it was nothing half-hearted about it. But I would say it was... A, a less than committed attempt in this sense that there is a woman and if you guys need help with writing her name is design writer Deb she will be on well she, at this point we're recording maybe has been on will coming on the point is is that design writer Deb and I had met each other through Instagram and so this was my first attempt and when I say I came to the I was like okay Amber okay you want me to try doing this? Basically, the inside voice was, okay, Amber, you want me to try this? This is crazy. This is ridiculous. No one can write this. This is intimate between me and my listener. But you know what? I'm paying you good money. It's ridiculous. I can't stand the yeah, but people when they pay me and they say yeah, but. So I'm like, Luann, go do what she says. Go see if somebody can write your intro, outro. So I reach out to design writer Deb and we have a great conversation and she says, I'm going to help you. But I cripple her efforts. This is hindsight, hindsight. I cripple her efforts by placing a less than going rate amount of money that I'm willing to pay to get it done to her when she goes to search. And so she says to me, well, we're probably going to have to look for a junior writer at that rate. And I said, yeah, well, you know, that's what it is. And so she's unsuccessful, right? Because design writer Deb listens to the show. She knows the quality that I need and want. She wants that same quality and she can't find somebody that she can vet that can do that quality at the rate that I'm at. So now I come back to Amber and I'm like, see, it won't work. <laughs> That's and right. That's we go right. many more months, right? We go many more months. Other things happen. I have, you know, practically, you know, I have major highs and major lows on what's happening in my day and my time. And then finally, you look at me again and you said, you know where the hours are. You know, this is the first place that we can find this chunk because now it's not just a matter of I want time to do yoga. Now I want time because I'm looking at the next level of the business and I'm saying mm -hmm. to you, I want to do Luann live like no one's ever done it before. I want to do this book launch like no one's ever done it before. I'm launching courses and I'm going to teach designers the things, the business education that they don't get in the university. I'm bringing this to them. I got a lot of things to do. And you're, you're saying, oh, so wait, we're adding like another 30 hours to your week at this point. I'm like, somehow, some way, right? And so, and you, the math doesn't make sense. Right. Like I literally need to say, math <laughs> does not compute. Like, see, and you know, I don't know no that. more time. <laughs> 
<laughs> in my map it does right but so now you you really you you like this is we we visit this again months weeks later and you just said to me i want to remind you of this huge space where you have time that you can find and so i went back to design writer deb and i said okay Tell me why it didn't work the first time. Was it because I wouldn't pay enough money or you couldn't find anybody? And she said it was a little of both. And I said, what if you just found somebody and you told me what they were worth? Get me the people. Get me. I, I want this. I want this to happen. I won't believe it till I see it, but I'm hopeful and I want it. And you name the price on what I should pay them. You're a professional in the field. I want the best. And my goodness, if she didn't find them, Right. Right. It's amazing. And what's interesting, Luann, so let's pause there for a second yeah. because I'm like, I'm thinking you put this lower amount, right? Which is ironic because you would value your own time probably <laughs> massively <laughs> quadruple. And and you should be getting double time because it's a Saturday and Sunday, right? right? right. So if we thought how much is your time worth, Luann, and it's double time because it's Saturday and Sunday, like even if you pay just a portion of that, you could pay a writer really, really well right. for their value, but you were still wrapping your head around, like, could this really work? It was almost like, Amber, I'm going to do this just so you'd stop asking, and then I don't really want to spend that much money to prove to you it didn't work. And then you go back and you're like, <laughs> okay, so if this was a replacement, they need to be an expert in their field, right. and I'm going to pay them as an expert. That's exactly right. And it became the type of thing where... I still didn't know if it would work and I still was, but I was willing to try it now. And I was willing to recognize, as you said in the beginning of the show, that I was the bottleneck. And when we started talking in terms of what you just said, paying an expert in their field to do what they are most put on this planet to do. So, and and I have my daughter, Christy, who is my um, brand manager. I have myself that we both know my voice. And I thought, you know, Luann, you take two full pages of notes. You highlight things. You circle things. You are giving a qualified, experienced writer the cheat sheet to what you think is important. You're not going to rip your audience off of that process. They're still going to know what you think is the lesson in this. It's not like I'm going to talk the show and never hear it again. I'm still doing my stuff there, right? And what happened was, Amber, I at that about that time, when, when I finally went back to Deb and I said, find me a professional at whatever professional rate it should be. Let me, I said, just surprise me when you find them. I'll, I'll let you know then if I think it's <laughs> worth it or not. Right. I was just like, just no handcuffs. Right. That was what the way the approach I took. And what happened was I also recently was having a conversation with an interior designer on the podcast who runs a large firm. And, you know, it wasn't that I hadn't heard this 50,000 times in 600 episodes, but this day I heard it so clearly. I said to her, how do you do it when you have multiple teams working under you? Do you, do they have complete carte blanche to do whatever design they want and you, you don't even see some of the projects or is your hand touch everything? And that principal said to me, I am involved in the beginning. I am the one that that approves if we're working with the client or not. I am the one that decides if we're taking the project or not. Then I look at the five or six senior designers that I have on my team. I align them with the personality of the client. I align them with the project and their expertise. And then they work with their entire team, the junior and the people under them, to create the plan. But it comes back to me for tweaking. I edit. I look at it. There isn't anything that leaves this office that I have not approved. And I have my design standards. This is the way we do tile and grout. This is the way we do this. There is a, and I just was like listening to the, to the conversation and thinking, O M G like this is no different than a senior design or a principal designer that wants to scale her firm or his firm. They cannot do 10 projects in three months if they don't put some trust and faith, teach, show, share 
but with a competent professional and then maintain the design, vision, and ultimate uh, deliverable by having their hand on the review process and the edit process. And I said, oh, right. Yes, you could do that, couldn't you? You could do the interview. You could call out in your notes everything that's important. They could listen to the interview. They could write it. Then you could revise and tweak before you present it to your clients, which are your listeners. It's, it's, it was just a, an amazing, amazing aha moment for me. Right. Because every time you heard that strategy, this is what, this is what many of us do is we hear a strategy. We shake our head. Yes. As we're listening, like, yeah, great strategy. And then we don't connect the dots in our (laughs) own businesses until we're ready. And that's what you were doing is you were already contemplating and thinking what was possible with a little nudge from me. And you were in that space where you were able to connect your dots for you and hear that. It's exactly right. When you say, you know, that you get the final approval and tweaking as a CEO or as a, you know, a principal designer, you're in the space of re- like preserving your bandwidth. So you need to preserve not just your time, but your mental energy and the mental energy that it takes to review and veto something is so much less. And so now you're giving yourself that it's green lighted. You're tr- once they're trained up, you're it's it's going down the path of yes, 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 yes. You're reviewing it and you step in only when you have to veto the yes and say that's a no. I actually don't agree with that language or I don't agree with that selection. That is so much less energy. And then at the end, together with your team, you're getting that final result. And for you in this example of connecting the dots is that my guess is that the principal designer would then be the one delivering the final. So she comes in, she or he comes in at the beginning, the team comes in, and then at the end, you're doing the same thing. You're interviewing the the guest, it goes to the writer, and then you're the one recording the intro and outro. Like there is no possible way that it's getting to your listeners without you having reviewed with a fine tooth comb of what's actually being said because you're the one saying it. Absolutely. Perfect, perfect analogy and example to um, to everyday business of how to use, utilize this. It's so true. And it really was a major epiphany for me because when we think of the some of the um, luxury firms that we have interviewed over the years for interior design from Barclay Rutera, who has 26 interior designers working for him, right? Um, Nate Burkus, you know, he's mm-hmm. got a team that, that works in Chicago and he said, on the show yes the team led by his you know senior designer does most of the actual in the weed stuff but he is there to final approve and edit and all the way to Laura Umansky and we have many many examples of this and so when that light bulb went off I said oh when these design firms reach these levels of success their vision isn't compromised the design deliverable is not less than it maintains that high quality because the principal has moved Moved to working in their zone of genius and working on the business and making all of the 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 mar- moving parts happen, but comes back to monitor that quality output so that the thing, the product that leaves the firm with their name on it, is one hundred percent their vision and their values, right? And so, right. and that's the same thing. And I knew, even though I. I had the expectation that I would have to tweak it, that I would, we internally, we called it Luan it. We would, I would have to Luan it, right? Uh, But the truth of the matter is, is that the other really amazing thing happened is when Deb was able to go out and who I know had my back so so much. She loves the show. She and I are friends and she was not going to phone it in on this search, right? And when she had the ability to go out and find the best people for the job, then she delivered the best people for the job. And the amount of tweaking to Luann it, you know, it's negligible compared to what I was doing. And so I imagine it's the same with the principal. When you really, really 
have enunciated your values. And so interestingly, we had a mastermind over the summer with 2 million plus design firms and many of them had already their, what they call their standards book. And I mentioned it a few moments ago. And so for instance, there are firms like I know Sandra Funk said to me, I always want in her standards book, she always wants the tile and the stone to be natural. Like she's not, you know, if you're a junior designer and you're going to specify a title, a tile, just go look at the standards book because she wants the grout to be this way. She wants the tile. You can pick whatever tile you want that works for the space, but you're going to pick it from these categories. And they, she has that for every single thing. And I realized that I really have that for the podcast. I had that back end. I want that there, the shows connect. If there's a lesson in one show, I want you to mention the other. And I give them that as I'm taking my notes. I'm also writing what it comes to me. Oh, this show is good for that. This show is good for that. Blah, 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 blah. So all the value that I think is in my intro outro is still in the intro outro. And someone else is creating it and then I'm Luanning it and it's amazing. Yes. And so the process that you're, you're referring to is that when you, before we ever worked together, you shared with me, you have a very specific note taking process, Th- like a specific thing goes in the upper right hand corner yes. and the left hand corner and the notes like you had developed this. And so you already had this like hidden treasure tool system standards and it was being used for yourself, but we were able to reuse it for your new writer. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's when you have your business systemized. You can teach it and, you know, have other people step in faster, more efficiently at a higher level of execution. Because for me, it developed because I might interview you today, but I might not put your show up for three months. And I found in the beginning, looking at my notes was like looking at, I don't know, something from hieroglyphics. I was like, what the (laughs) heck was this? So over the weeks and months, I was like, oh, information like this goes on this part of the page. Information like this goes on this part of the page. Information goes on this part of the page. And so it be, it evolved into a very processed process, right? Exactly. Exactly. So yes, it just is so amazing. And if you're listening, I'm curious if you're saying to yourself, what? Like she didn't write that one. She didn't do this one. Uh, You know, I would never let it go to your point. The CEO still has to have the stamp of approval. It at, at the end of the day, This is my baby. This is my brand. This, I live and breathe it. I love it. I love it like I can't tell you how much I love what this podcast has created in the connection of human people, me and you, our other co-authors, the listeners, you know, the people that I meet at the live events. And I truly, truly believed that I could not let go of that task. And you really pointed out to me, if you are going to spend 18 hours a week for the rest of your life in this task, how the heck do you think you are going to execute all of these other ideas that you have to enhance your listeners and their businesses? And that was the boom. It was like, oh, yeah, you're right. I'm not going to just one day get another whole day a week or two more days a week. It's never going to happen. And so... Just like an interior design firm, you know, really can continue to elevate their design and elevate their clients and the client experience and continue to put out really beautiful rooms and spaces. I was like, I can do that too. And and I have to tell you, I love the writers that we found. And, we, you know, once, once Deb found one, then she found two. Then, interestingly, it turned out that one of the listeners of the show turns out that she's not an interior designer. She's actually a writer. <laughs> and, and she said, I love your show. Could I write for you? And I was like, are universe seriously right now with this, right? Like once you open up your mind and your heart to the possibilities, then now the, reconfir- the, the confirmations and the reinforcements of my beliefs were coming in the other way. Right, Amber? Yes. And I remember you telling me like, she's a listener. Like she's listened to so many episodes. She knows my voice. And I was like, and she was there the whole time. And she was right? there the whole time. Time. Yes. And she was there 
the whole time. She was waiting. To, I mean, not not that she knew she was waiting, but it was right. waiting for you to shift what was possible and thinking differently about this thing that um, I guess I was a dog with a bone, not wanting to let go of, mm -hmm. challenging you to find a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, Luann, the thing is, is we could have tweaked a lot of things and, you know, we're not done. Like we can still tweak oh, yeah. more things, but were we going to get back 18 hours? Like, were we going to get out back like blocks of two to four hours? No, like this was the thing that was going to make the biggest impact. Right. Once you reclaim that impact, now you're going to have the bandwidth. You don't know this yet because we're not done, but now <laughs> you're going to have the bandwidth to go back and reevaluate so much else. One, because you have the time to reevaluate, but two, because you've just proven to yourself that when you reevaluate doing things that are just normalized, like I've always done it that way, then, then you're going to look at everything with a fresh perspective in your business. You know, you are 1000% about, uh, right about that because the fact is, is when you have an aha moment of this magnitude that you learn, you know, this was not easy. You know, I hope that's what you're hearing in this yeah. show. This was not easy. I really fully believed that something in the show would suffer if I did this. And I would not accept that. I, I would work a 14 hour day, seven days a week before I would accept that. That's just as simple. I made the commitment to do this and every day doing this really feels amazing. And so right. it wasn't it, five years into it almost. I was not, I've not at the point where I'm like, Oh, God, I have to do another interview. I'm like, yes, who's on the deck for today? You know what I mean? It's like, I love it. But the thing was, to your point, it was not sustainable at that amount of time. And the thing is, the truth of the matter is, it does not take the writers the same amount of time it takes me. First of all, they are professional writers. Second of all, they're not emotionally attached to the content. Now, I can tell by the output that they have attachment and they have respect and they have care, but they're not doing the rabbit hole stuff that I'm doing. You know it in your design firm. If you are going to sit there and design something, you know, you can spin it around and tweak it and let's change the fabric and should I use that knob? But if you have a trusted, talented designer in your firm that brings you a completed design, you don't throw the whole thing out. You just make it a tiny bit better because it's your firm and it's your vision. But it, it is so possible now without looking at a blank screen the way I looked at that blank Word document and you looking at the blank floor plan. It's just come in and do that superpower. And when you have a fully fledged professional under you, you know, these writers, I know they're not taking four hours to do this, right? Because they uh -huh. can come in, they assess the information, they assess my notes, and they get to work and they don't overthink it. And they don't say, Oh, I left out about that episode. <laughs> right? Because when I remember an episode that really would make the point, I'll scrap the whole darn thing and start over again. Oh, no, this is so much better. <laughs> you, oh my gosh. So Luann, you're actually bringing up another point. I'm just going to kind of tease it out to your listeners is when we're looking for reclaiming time, one place is obviously where you're spending the most amount of time. That's the strategy we went with for you. But another strategy is to ask what are the activities that you are um, most feeling the most resistance with and resistance can come from the stories you tell or emotional attachment and when there's resistance then you're making that task take so much longer and maybe even avoiding it when your business needs that activity done consistently and so when I find a business owner that is um, having that that challenge I'm also looking there is like okay we can work through the challenge that's an option what does that look like like the mindset of it like what's that resistance or we can outsource pieces of it that you are feeling that resistance to because the overall business is regaining efficiency. And we have to make decisions both for the business owner in your own time, but we're also making decisions for what does the business need? I'm always asking that question because as small business owners, we kind of like to like mesh those together. 
And when we really see ourselves as, okay, what do we need? So what does Luann need? She wants more exercise, more balance, more downtime. What does the business need? The business needs Luann to be able to bring on, back, bring on this university and to do a book launch and to do um, Luann Live. So when we weigh those, now we're making decisions from what is the most efficiency for the business as well. And sometimes it's pulling the owner out of things that their stories around or resistance. Yeah, no, it's true. And, and, you know, just to piggyback on that, the other aha lesson of this journey with you is that the intro outros for the two and then now three episodes was always happening on Saturday and Sunday. And that's why I was working, you know, anywhere from four to six hours on each of those days, because they are, that is the very last day I can do them in order to get the shows out. And so I had this, you know, feeling of, this is going to take so long. I've got 16 emails I've got to do. I've got to make this conversation. I have to write this article for Window Fashion Vision. I have to do another part of the book. I have to do this. Okay, so I can't do the shows right now. And then it became, okay, sweetie, this is D-Day. And I was having D-Day every Saturday and Sunday. And so you, that was another thing that you uncovered. It's like, what do you keep putting off? Now, I never would put it off not to do it, right? I, I yep. don't care if I'm till 11 o'clock on Sunday night. It's going to get done. You know, the lady's going to do the work. But it was also that combination of this is a lot of time. It's very important to me, yet why is it this thing that I'm always pushing to the curb? And there was a little, you know, aha in there too that um, was part of the process of me finally being open to finding a solution was, is right. really what happened, right? I was yeah. finally open to finding a solution. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's not going to be a surprise. Like you're, you're not now that you have your writer suddenly going to five days. Like I know no. you too well for this, right? <laughs> so that's not going to happen. But what, what happened is we're relieving you from very hard due dates. So now if you get inspired and you want to, you know, have a Saturday morning where you're working on a project that brings you passion and you're excited about, but you're not hitting a looming deadline of Sunday at midnight to that feel better for you. That's right. Does that feel better to be able to cut out at noon and do a few hours instead of having to do, you know, six to eight hours on a Saturday. So you're going to just have more options with how you're spending your weekend. I don't for any moment think that it's going to be just no work. Um, But we also want to make purposeful action of, well, what else are we going to put in there as holding spots? Probably a run, probably yoga, probably like, like what are those things that have been squeezed out? Let's get those back in and then ask yourself for fun. Like, what do I want to work on my business? Mm -hmm. Because Luann, we get into business because we actually love what we do. Like for many of us, this is the thing. I remember a few years ago, my coach asking me what hobbies I had. And I'm like, hobbies, <laughs> my business is my hobby. Not because I didn't have balance, but I was like to the now saying like, no, like I love this. Right. Like, like a hobby for me would be to learn a new skill set on the weekend. Like that sounds fun. That would serve my business. Right. Right. And, and that's for many of us that, that thing. And so now if it's something you're choosing to do on a weekend versus having to do, what is your relationship with your business now? Your relationship is I really enjoy it. I enjoy the interviews. I enjoy working on these projects and you're not hit having to hit deadlines and push other things out that you may or may not want to do on the weekend. Yeah, I know it's, you're, you're amazing. You're remarkable. I have gotten so much value from you over these last several months. And I know that more is, you know, like I just, I let you, you said it a few moments ago with one big huge breakthrough moment comes another because on the heels of it it really becomes a little for me what it is is you want to say it becomes a priority or addictive is really the word that came to my mind of figuring out other ways that I can task other competent skilled experts to do things for me so that I can recoup the free time but the truth of the matter is is I'm only going to create more things with that time. I know I am. But the difference is what you also just said a moment ago. Now when I'm working on a Saturday or a Sunday, it's by choice. And if my husband walks by and says, do you want to go for a bike ride this minute? I don't have to say, 
I have to finish editing the show and write the intro outro. How about this minute in three and a half hours? <laughs> like right. now I can be like, oh, well, I was really enjoying doing my forecasting for Luann Live. But yeah, I could do that later. I could do that tomorrow. Let's go for a bike ride. Whole different mindset whole different world because now usually what happens now when I get on the bike and I'm riding because I've just come from doing some a little brainstorming and working on my business now I'm even getting more ahas and more and I, I come back and I'm like whoa another big idea love it let's write it down right so it's just it's that it's it's it is just um what I say all the time you know that even the client that you assess the most that has maybe the most taste and the best ability to put patterns and colors and shapes together from a lay person's perspective of all the clients you know you still know that you no lay person can replace your value and your expertise in having done floor plans and product selections and specifications and everything for the the life of your business and the career that you in you, you that you're in you are the expert and you know what you're doing and uh-huh. when you work with somebody who knows what you're doing it is mind blowing and so amber you are the expert on productivity and you know what you're doing and i have benefited so much and i'm so glad that we cross paths and that each of the people listening all of my friends listening are going to be able to you know see your information in the book and of course, they don't have to wait because you have your own podcast. So tell everybody how they find you, followed you, and get involved in what you do. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Leanne. And I just want to say thank you. When, we, when I talked to you about what today's um, interview would be about, uh, you were absolutely like, yes, because I wanted to serve your audience by pulling back the curtains on something that you had been working so hard on behind the scenes. And I think your audience is going to be forever grateful for sharing all of this and inspiring them to take the action that feels really scary. Um, so thank you for that, Luann. You, thank you. Um, yeah. So uh, thank you so much. So yeah, I have a podcast that's called Productivity Straight Talk and you can find it anywhere you're listening to this podcast right now. Just search up Productivity Straight Talk. Um, you can also find out more about how you can work with me and different trainings I have over at theproductivityspecialist.com. And I love hanging out on Instagram and that is Amber underscore De La Garza. Please connect with me there and say hi. Jump in my DMs. I want to hear from you if you're listening to this episode and just, you know, put a face to a, to a name. Yeah, it's really something. I, uh, I think you might have been a little surprised that I was willing to do this, but I thought, yes. you know, it was just such a powerful aha for me to go through this process. And I think that if you're listening, if you think to yourself, oh, I didn't notice any change in her business. I didn't notice any change in the podcast. Then that is the proof that it is possible that you really can up-level your business by looking around you and looking inward first to see what patterns and beliefs and things you are holding on to that don't serve you, but then looking outside for qualified experts that really can help you scale your business because that's the only way you do it you can't you cannot scale if you're not willing to um, look to other experts and people and trust them to be in their superpower and so I hope that you agree that <laughs> that we have achieved it. <laughs> I do. I do. This is a perfect example of mindset plus strategy. I think those two together is like a secret weapon. And you did. You uncovered both of those for the listeners today, sharing what mindset and thoughts that you worked through along with applying real strategy that could make the change after the, the, the breakthrough on your or mindset. So oh, okay. perfect. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amber, for, for all of these months and for today as well. I really appreciate and value you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Dora, 
during these last several months, and I have worked with Amber, I have had one aha moment after another. You can hear it. She challenged me. She pushed me. She made me question beliefs that I was convinced were unchangeable. Okay. And it's different, right? It's like we, how many times, you know, I met you at a real life event and you said, Oh, I just love how your mind works with money and the mindset and that, you know, everything is possible. Well, that's great. I have that lockdown. I'll give you that. But I have my own things too. None of us escapes the things that happen between our ears that really prevent us from achieving the most that we possibly can. All right. So this was mine. These were my ahas. These were my lessons. All right. And one of the biggest advantages that I have found to working with Amber is that, you know, she guided me through the strategies that didn't work. She described it, how when you're working with a specialist, a coach, anyone, one-on-one, it is different than hearing it from a podcast or reading a book. Yay, all day long to listening to it on a podcast and reading it in a book, of course. But that extra layer when you work one-on-one, it enables you that, that gift to go back to that coach and say, yeah, that didn't work for me. And they can either push you back and say, sweetie, you didn't try hard enough, or they can help you figure out a new way around it, okay? A way to revise or tweak the strategy so that it will work for you, just like we did with that whole email rabbit hole that I, you know, got into. It was a barrier for me, and I knew I was wasting time in it, but when the first strategy didn't work, she didn't let me abandon ship. We kept tweaking it until eventually we found a system that works for my crazy pants brain. All right. Another huge aha moment for me in this process was the moment that I realized that I had been normalizing a seven day work week. That's huge right there. I had normalized it. You see, when she said that word, that's a word that hits me between the eyes. Because it wasn't just, oh, you're so amazing. You work seven days a week. It was like, you've made this normal. That's not amazing. That's not to be admired. That's crazy. (laughs) Right? Okay. But you have to remember, when I started the podcast, it was my side hustle. And to a large extent, it still is. All right? And I also was telling myself that I was in startup mode. That this is what it takes in startup mode. You know, I can't say the expression on air. (laughs) All right. But the thing was, startup mode went from a few months to a year, and it turned into four years. And I was still working 10 to 14 hours a day during the week and all day Saturdays and Sundays. All right. Many of us do this when we're starting our businesses. Okay. We give it our everything. Our businesses are our baby, as I said in the show. And, and this is good. This is, you know, I will never tell you not to work hard with something and for something you're passionate about, but When habits like these, they turn into who we are and they become so ingrained that it is almost impossible to step out of it. And the real problem was that once I had normalized it, I personally did not believe there was a way out. Okay. And Amber helped me realize that that was a story that I told myself. You hear me say that to you guys about the money stories. That's a story in your head. Well, I had created this crazy story in my head. All right. And she taught me that I could change the story. And I love it. And it's amazing. All right. And so what is the biggest problem? Like many of us, we think that we're the only ones that can do, as Amber calls them, our highest value activities. The thought of letting go of a high value activity sometimes seems impossible. But as your business grows, just as mine has, it is crucial to scaling. You just can't do everything. You must delegate. And you have to be okay with accepting help. It's as simple as that. And the really wonderful thing is that it doesn't have to take away from your business. This is what I've learned. When you outsource parts of your business to experts in their field, and when you trust others to do the things that they were put on this planet to do, then you become stronger in the things that you were put on this planet to do. Okay? I love it. It's just so, it's really a mind-blowing revelation when you have this before and after experience. So. 
Speaking of trusting our experts to do what they do, our sponsor Monogram Appliances are experts at what they do. From the -the state-of-the-art features built into every appliance to the detailed styling designed to enhance and add beauty to the kitchens you design. I want you to go to monogram.com forward slash Luann to see all the benefits of being part of the Monogram Design Trade Program. And while you're at it, go back and listen to number um, episode number 536, where Robert and Alex explain explain just how the program works. Okay. If you want to hear this for yourself, I highly suggest you check out number 536. In the meantime, go to monogram.com forward slash Luann. All right. And so I want to say too, when I decided to find an expert, I was so glad that I had met design writer Deb. If anyone could lead me to a writer that could do what I needed done, it was her. Deb was on the podcast just last week, one week ago, episode uh, 573. So I really encourage you to listen to the show if you happen to miss it. All right. And look, the bottom line is the CEO doesn't need to be in the trenches all the time and should not be in the trenches, but we do have the responsibility to build in the systems to make sure that things are handled the way we want in our vision. All right. For more on this sort of conversation, if you're struggling with productivity, if you're struggling, struggling with deciding what you should do and what you shouldn't do, your high value items, of course, check out Amber's first episode. But I also have my friend Madeline McRae was on episode number 283. Okay. And then also revisit episode 557 with Desi Cresswell, another one of the co-authors for the upcoming book. And in that episode, she took a really good look at the CEO mindset and how to get yourself out of these trenches so that you can dedicate your time and your vision to your company. Okay. So, and I want to say to you that Amber, Amber has a new program coming out called Time Management Made Simple. You can look into this at theproductivityspecialist.com forward slash time made simple. All right. Productivityspecialist.com forward slash time made simple. This is a four module program that will teach you her proven step-by-step time management system for small business owners. Okay. You can move from stressed out and overwhelmed to fully in control and fulfilled. All right. I cannot emphasize enough how much Amber is truly living in her superpower every day. All right. And this is your chance to learn a little bit more and apply it to your business. Okay. And I also want to mention that this fall, Desi is going to be teaching a course with, under Luann University called Increase Confidence, Increase Profits. Okay. This is another thing about mindset. All right. So head over to increaseconfidenceincreaseprofits.com and see what that's about. The details are all there starting in September, 2020. All righty. Lots of great information, right? Lots of interesting ways for you to really reorganize your business, reframe the way you think about the business. And these are all the foundational things to up leveling your business to that next you know, that next goal that you have for yourself, honestly. So it doesn't matter where you are in your journey right now, baby designer, rising designer, season. We all, look at me, 39 years in business and I had to be taught these things. So, um, you know, I, I don't, I can't, I can't recommend Amber enough. That's all I can tell you. So, all righty. Um, that's it. That's it for today. That's a lot. I think it's good. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.